Hey everyone, this is Leo Young with Impress Reviews, and I'm giving you Supergirl Season 2, Episode 1, The Adventures of Supergirl. So I really don't uh, have much of an intro at the moment, mainly because I don't have access to the impressive reviews picture, and since I don't, I don't really know what episode this would count as, because it's coming before the arrow and all that. I guess you would say this is episode 3 of impressive reviews. So, first off, I want to just say I was really digging the intro. Not, I'm... I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. I was really digging, well, really the the introduction episode to season two of Supergirl. It was so much different and so much better than season one. Because personally to me, I was one of those guys, I was like, oh my goodness, this show is horrible. It's a chick flick, basically. And, uh, well, that was kind of problematic to me. But as the show went on, I still said this with a chick flick. Because I saw some problems like Supergirl getting caught in quicksand and all that. But this one, it went straight into the action. Supergirl knows who she is and she knows what she's going to do. So, let's jump into the uh, episode. So, it starts off with uh, Supergirl having a small party with Jimmy and Winslow and all the others. And um, as they're doing, as they're having the party, a ship flies by. So, she and Martian Manhunter go out to catch it. So, the ship lands somewhere within National City and they... She sees, when she catches up with it, she sees that the ship looks like her Kryptonian ship that she rode on her way to Earth. So she opens it, and there's a man inside who's, well, I already know, is Mon-El, who is a Legion member. But we'll talk about that, hopefully, in another episode. So, um, uh, she automatically assumes that he's Kryptonian, but just to be safe, Martian Manhunter brings him to the, uh, DOE headquarters. I mean, DEO headquarters, I'm sorry, just to be safe. And the new headquarters is a giant building in National City. So after they have, like, the little talk, like, he's too dangerous, but he's in a coma and that he hasn't really been aging because he was flying through a specific, like, area where time doesn't really work, um, they leave the um, they leave him because, again, he's in a coma. And Kara brings her sister over to the side, and so she's going on a date with Jimmy. But her sister pretty much notices that she's not into it. She's not really feeling it. She's just forcing herself to do it. But seeing as she believes in herself, Kara goes on to have the date at their at her apartment. And uh, this is basically when we started seeing the trailer. This is when the shuttle blows up. So when it does, over Metropolis, Clark, who's played by Tyler Hoffman, he sees the shuttle blowing up. And he sneaks off into his uh, alleyway, and he just goes up, up, and away. And he's right after it. And just like in the trailers, both um, news anchors go like, I hope he's watching. I hope she's watching. And it they really did a good job on it. The CGI, the animation, when she flies up to grab the ship. And that was a little weird. How is Superman able to fly at the speed where he's able not to... You know what I mean? Like, the ship's flying towards Superman, and somehow he's flying backwards while going... You know, it was kind of weird, but it was awesome watching the two work together to actually stop the um, shuttle from crashing. And after they land, they have this funny little moment where a family rides by, and uh, Supergirl and Superman both say they like to meet the uh, people. So they go and they say hello, and um, Supergirl makes a comment saying that she changed Superman's diaper. Which is kind of funny, because Superman is this, like, he looks like he's 50 with a with a 5 o'clock shadow, and she looks like she's still in high school. So that was a little funny. I'll, I'll give it, to, I'll give them that. Now, back at the DEO, we see that, uh, well, they go back to the DEO with Superman, and automatically we see that he and Martian Manhunter have some history. Which we later on learn is that because Martian Manhunter was there when Superman and had first encountered kryptonite and in fact he was the one who named it that and superman wanted to destroy it but martian manhunter kept it i'm guessing because he knew that superman would be so powerful that if the two of them fought they would destroy earth so he just needed it as a failsafe um i want to just give out a, sh a short note this is when uh when basically comments about lex luthor and he tried to set off an earthquake in california which is kind of wow that's crazy and if he's, like, if they do the president storyline or they say he's run for president at one point, like, wow, how did he get away with that? You know what I'm saying? 
Anywho, the next scene is basically uh, Kara taking Clark over to her job so he meets Jimmy. And Cat Grant is just flabbergasted when she sees him. She's She pulls Kara to the side and goes like, oh my god, I, I can't believe you know Clark Kent, that hunk, that giant Kansas boy hunk. And so she pulls Clark out of the building like, they just go on a little walk. But, um, later on, they basically find out that, uh, the re- that, uh, someone on the shuttle was missing, and it was Lena Luthor. Lena Luthor. Lex's, um, uh, little sister. And that when the shuttle had exploded, she wasn't there. So they went, Clark and Kara go over to her later, and as they're doing this, John Corbin, the, uh, guy who becomes Metallo, is obtaining attack drones for an unknown individual who we basically learn later on is Lex Luthor. Luthor. I'm sorry, it's kind of weird saying his name, Lex Luthor. And so Kara and Clark go and they meet up with Lex's sister and she's basically like, I want to change the name Luthor because Lex has just made it evil. I'm going to change the company to L Corp, not Luthor Corp. I'm going to make it like a good thing. And as so Superman and Supergirl pretty much have no other option but to leave. I mean, well, they're not Superman and Supergirl. They're in the reporter's suits. And so they leave. But uh, as they're doing so, back at the DEO, Martian Manhunter and Kara's sister, I honestly forgot her name. I'm so sorry. I will. I promise I'll learn in the next episode. But they basically go off and they um, they find out that where the ship had exploded, it exploded exactly where Lena would have been sitting, which is a little too coincidental. So that is definite. So they pretty much found out that this was a assassination attempt on Lena's life. So as they find this out, John, fi- uh, well, John Corbin finally sets out his motion to kill her. He sends the drones in, and Superman and Supergirl pretty much dispatch them with haste and no, uh, no, no dilly dallying, basically, folks. Now, one other thing is that um, Superman, his heat vision is also blue. Now, that's just a problem to me because, you know, we're all used to the red. But there is a Gotham City reference, which is kind of odd because you're telling me that Superman was shot and there's drones flying around, but Gotham City is safer than that? So that should tell you something. That probably means Batman doesn't exist and Gotham is safer. Now, the next day, Lena holds a press conference, and Corbin, again, like, makes his move. He sets off explosions. He causes the L building to start to collapse. He's causing pain and mayhem. And so, uh, sacrificing, like, saving Lena, both Superman and Supergirl go to save the building, while, uh, uh, Kara's sister goes to, uh, protect Lena from Corbin, uh, and really the day is saved, but, um, in the end, Corbin is shot in the chest by Lena. And, um, well, that's pretty much that. They return back to the DEO, and that's where Superman says he'll be sticking around, so we'll probably see him for the next two episodes. And that's going to be pretty freaking awesome. Now, another thing I want to add is, uh, the after credits was basically... John waking up in Cadmus, where he turns into Metallic. Alright, so this is just Leo's thoughts on the episode, and really there's not much. I already gave all my thoughts in the uh, main review, mainly because I didn't think I would have this image. I have, like, some type of work OCD or something, so I had to just... But, you know, now that I have the image, um, there's really not much to think. Like, there's one thing, though. I'm a little worried that... um, they're going to use Cadmus as a way to uh, bring Superman's villains to him, if you know what I mean. You know how uh, in season two of The Flash, it was Zoom who was bringing in the villains from his world. And then Arrow just magically had villains. I'm not sure. They were all assassins or something. Um, so, you know, I'm a little worried. And then season one of Supergirl was... Uh, an alien prison ship from the Phantom Zone was dropping, you know, aliens down on Earth. Aliens that could fight Superman. I was like, okay, that's a little... It's whatever. It's whatever. But it just makes me think, like, am I going to only see Parasite because, you know, Cadmus made him? Or am I going to actually see his origin? Same thing goes with people like, uh, let's say they add Atomic Skull. And, um... 
Well, honestly, I did a re- I did some research, and really, there's not a lot of super villains for Superman. Like, yeah, Livewire exists, but we already saw how she got her powers. There are some Superman villains that Super Supergirl fights, but other than that, like Superman's main villains are people who can destroy entire worlds: Brainiac, Darkseid, Lobo. So, like, I'm just I'm really hoping that like people like Parasite already exist. Is like. He went through the accident. I mainly say Parasite because he's the one I'm most excited to see. Not that mutant creature thing, but like literally the purple, uh, purple inhaled skin Deadpool looking guy. Anyways, that's my thoughts for the, um, my well, that's Leo's personal thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video.